I've been around the whole YouTube block now for a while, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I gave the whole dedicated series thing my full attention. Basically doing what I was already doing for years, but taking it more seriously and tagging my username to the end of the video titles. Oh yeah, dude reviews. I see why it took so long for my channel to gain traction. And if it's one thing that I'm leaving behind as my legacy, it's my unhealthy love for Kirby. It's really not like it's my favorite game franchise or anything, but I just can't help myself. Of course though, this franchise is not just about video games. No, no, no. There has been one specific request that you have all been plaguing me with endlessly. Couldn't go a single video without getting at least five people asking for it. And well, it is now my 100th episode. What better time than now? Yes, there is a Kirby anime. Let's talk about the Kirby anime. Kirby Right Back At Ya, or Hoshi no Kabi in Japan, was an anime that ran for a few years back in the early 2000s. The American name taken from that one thing that Kirby does when he inhales a thing, and then pfft, it's back at ya. It's clever. The show played on multiple stations all over the world, but I was exposed to it through the lovely little nugget of Saturday morning cartoons, Foxbox. Good memories there. D do you remember when they made Pokemon, but with food? What a time that was. And as we all are pretty well aware, cartoons for Nintendo properties, let alone gaming in general, aren't a foreign concept. Of course, we had Mario and Zelda back in the late 80s, early 90s. There's Pokemon, that's the big one. And soon after Kirby, even F-Zero got its own anime. Not even Pikmin was safe from the animated cartoon treatment. So what do we have here? An entire series based off of the pink puffball? Yeah, I was on board from day one. As someone who clearly really likes the Kirby series and was about in middle school at the time, you tell me they're gonna do a cartoon with one of your favorite franchises and it's gonna play around Saturday mornings? Yeah, you could sign me up. There were a few different ways to check this show out over the years. There's a few DVDs that were released. Some episodes were actually included in the Wii's Kirby Dream Collection. A dedicated channel was released on Wii that showcased select episodes for a period of time, exclusive to Europe and Australia. And there was even the Nintendo Anime Channel for 3DS. Also, this one exclusive to just Europe. Wow, this one, this one just straight up had a bunch of animated shows on demand. Not even just Nintendo stuff. Weird. And when you go through the history of video game cartoons, this little tidbit will probably surprise you, but Kirby Right Back At Ya came in at 100 episodes. So yeah, that's... that's a lot of Kirby. Now obviously here, I can't review this series as a whole in one video. It took me how long to get to 100 episodes of my own show? I shudder to think how long it would take to cover 100 episodes of another show. That's not gonna happen. Instead, what I've done here is I've picked out three episodes, all of which are the Japanese versions that have the English audio edited on top of it, before you ask any questions, and uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just move on from there. So, no better place to start than with episode one. I think you guys have waited long enough. Let's dive into Kirby right back at ya. The series begins with a giant octopus monster eating an entire herd of sheep and spitting out the remains onto the sheep's herder. What? And then we got that iconic opening, man. Let me just say, I love this theme. It's just so damn catchy. You could have never seen a single episode of the show, but chances are you still know this song by heart. Ooh, and that saxophone solo that pops in. Ooh, that's so good. People also forget that they made a very similar song for the commercial of Nightmare in Dreamland, which released around the same time. I really have no idea who decided that genre of music would be good for Kirby, but hey, give him a raise. He's the name you should know, he's the star of the show, and he's got maximum pink. This intro is fantastic. Right back at ya. 
Well, it turns out the residents of Cappy Town don't like a monster destroying everything in their village. Can't blame them. And they're all voicing their complaints to the head office, that of King DDD. You know, we, we kind of say the phrase King DDD so often nowadays, I almost forget that that actually means that he's in a position of power with Little fella wouldn't hurt a fly unless he was on the end of a fish hook. A voice I, I did not expect. I'll say that. And his second in command is a snail, Escargoon. What a terrible name, I love it. He is a character exclusive to the anime, though he did make a brief cameo in Kirby Mass Attack. Pretty crazy that one of the games actually acknowledged not only him, but the anime in general. Unsure of what to do, everyone consults the great sage, Kabu, for advice. Yeah, that one, that one random enemy that would just like teleport once? He's basically a god now, keep up. He speaks of a prophecy that a star warrior named Kirby will come to save them. And like clockwork, hey there he is, the good old pink marshmallow is here to save the day. And promptly, after not knowing what he is... <laughs> Alright, this is as good a time as any to bring this up. What is with this animation style? Rather than just sticking to 2D drawings the whole time, the team decided to occasionally show off, shoehorning in 3D models. It just looks off? and dates the animation more than it should. You could have at least gotten like the outline sizes the same. It just nothing, nothing meshes. But now Kirby has some brand new friends. There's Tiff and Tuff, as well as the duo of Fololo and Falala. Never really understood the name change here. I know Japanese people typically have trouble with the letter L, but why just replace one of the three? My name's Tiff. Name Tiff. Oh no. No, 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 I re I do not want Kirby to speak English. The next few minutes consist of DDD trying to kill Kirby, and the residents just coming to accept that our lovely Star Warrior likes to eat everything. I love him. It's Tiff! Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, was that, was that words? This is what I said, a king! Dude, what? Ho oh, ho ho, is that who I think it is? Okay, what? Can we play that again real quick? <laughs> oh, bring out the mariachi, here comes Meta Knight. Okay, wait, 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 that's not, that's not even the start of it. Just try to imagine what Meta Knight's voice would possibly sound like. The king is not the problem for now. Now we have to find the real monster. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's not what you expected. Look at Meta Knight just coming in here sounding like Luis from Resident Evil 4. Okay, I have only one very important question. You gotta smoke. We are then introduced to a major component of the show, DDD's direct access to Nightmare Enterprises, aka NME. Enemy. It's, it's okay, more, more clever names. In basically every episode, he calls them to ask for a monster to come into town and cause his own little bit of ruckus and it's usually Kirby's primary target throughout the entire show. Whatever monster of the week the king decides to chip in for, that's, that's, that's what we're fighting this episode, just accept it. Soon enough, everybody comes to realize what we knew all along, DDD is the one that was causing havoc through Cappy Town with the octopus, which is, in fact, the monster we saw earlier. He just gets really big, to the surprise of nobody. Being the natural born hero that he is, Kirby swoops in to stop the octopus before it causes too much destruction. With the grand power of suck. This is also when we get to see Kirby's first ever transformation into Fire Kirby. The ability transformations are all treated like a pretty big deal in this show, which is pretty great, honestly, as opposed to in the games where the abilities are about as valuable as, oh, I just lost one. I guess I'll get another one, who cares? Thanks to his rideable warp star, Kirby spits a whole lot of fire in the monster's face, strong enough to send it flying away, and just like that, the day is saved. And with the idiot that King DDD is destroying Kirby's ship, he now has permanent residence in Cappy Town, kickstarting all of the adventures that are to follow. Kirby. This is actually a really good first episode, 
Like, for a Kirby cartoon, it nails what it needs to. It shows us how he got where he is, what abilities he's capable of, and sort of an idea of what he's going to be able to tackle in the series to follow. So, that's pretty good. It moves a little fast, I will say that much, but overall, that gets a good old okay sign from me. That's good stuff. Next up, let's take a look at what seems to be one of the fan favorite episodes, Waddle While You Work. In this episode, King DDD has found himself in massive debt with NME, and their way to make up some of that money, sell off their seemingly endless supply of Waddle Dees. It's a pretty simple business structure, I think. You know, you pop out a Waddle Dee from one of these little vending machines, they come out and perform some odd jobs that you wouldn't want to do, and then some cleaning, driving, sorting mail. Something about this just seems a little weird, though. You got people just buying other living beings to perform jobs for you and working them constantly while you just sit there and reap the rewards. Is... is this an episode of a Kirby cartoon that talks about... S slavery? Okay. The residents of Cappy Town end up enjoying this just a bit too much, filling the entire town from top to bottom in adorable little Waddle Dees, eliminating all of them from DDD's own castle. There are realistically worse problems to have. Meanwhile, like Kirby's been painted to look like a Waddle Dee, and he's totally content with just roaming around with them. I, I really wish I could just live as carefree as he can. Now suffering depression, I guess. King DDD just finds himself wandering around with nothing better to do and almost eats a live baby bird. That's pretty messed up. But it turns out that that is one of the children of Dinoblade. Wow, she's in the anime too. That's sick. Didn't see that coming. And thanks to Waddle Doo's simple call to arms, all of the Waddle Dees and Kirby too, because man, he just doesn't know any better go out and try to stop Dinoblade. But despite coming off as a bit of an idiot, this is where Kirby comes to shine with his Warp Star, saving the baby chick and returning it to its home. Ah, uh, a family reunited. A happy ending. I really enjoyed the concept of this episode. Waddle Dee's for sale. I'll be honest, I would take a few of them. There's not really much substance in this one though. It's adorable to watch, but there's not much here. Also, I know I'm jumping around the series here, so surely it will explain why this happens, but Kirby has a pet talking bird to Cory. Okay, I guess when we have a silent protagonist, this is our next best step? Anything that ensures that Kirby never speaks English again. Really though, this episode sort of encapsulates what the series was always meant to be. Just a cute set of moving pictures that take place in the Kirby universe. A lot of the episodes don't necessarily revolve around Kirby since, again, he is a silent protagonist. It's all really a matter of how Kirby reacts to whatever situation goes on around him. And there are plenty of action scenes too. While obviously not every episode features an ability transformation as I just showed, when they do pop up, it's a really solid showcase of when Kirby can get a little more intense, which is a pretty good parallel to the games themselves, and that is super important. This show may not be 100% indicative of the games to a T, but it still captures the identity of that franchise without insulting the intelligence of the fanbase. It's just very childish. But who cares, Kirby's pretty cute. And while Kirby does find himself in combat from time to time in the show, things never really get too dark or intense. You gotta remember, this anime was showing off before the era of games where Kirby would be basically going to try and stop these evil deities from destroying space and time as we know it. What is this franchise? But that leads us into the third and final episode for today, Cartoon Buffoon. I know there's a lot of hype behind this one, so, uh, let's see what all the hubbub is all about. Alright, so the premise of this one is pretty simple. King DDD wants to make his own animated TV show, and he wants to be the main character. So he hires the town residents to work on the cartoon, but it turns out they only have a few days to make the entire cartoon for the folks over at Enemy, and, uh, the residents are... Oh, they're terrible. Animation takes time, King, and plenty of money. Oh, any animators out there? I think this show got a whole lot more relatable. 
I guess it's okay, as long as it's legal. Yeah, if we could keep this legal and not demonetized, that'd be great. Despite the king showing constant signs of being a total joke, everyone seems completely fine with working with him on this project, even including him in the production meetings. At least on the opposite side of him, we have Tiff here to make sure everyone is set straight. We're gonna draw a cartoon starring Kirby instead, clearly the better choice. We then cut to Tiff burning the midnight oil, trying to write a script. Oh god, now it's become relatable to me. The progression of this episode is actually kinda neat. It goes through a step-by-step -step process of making a full-fledged cartoon in an effort to teach those who think it's super easy. Or maybe it's like this weird deep thing where all the complaints that the characters are getting about the cartoon are the actual developers venting their frustrations about making the cartoon that they're making about the cartoon process. This goes pretty deep, actually. Also, yeah, the residents can't draw themselves out of a paper bag. Oh no, the deadline is approaching! And without letting any of the staff know, DDD has gone ahead and replaced the entire cartoon with himself as the main character. How he found the time to do that, I have no idea. DDD, that's the name you should know! DDD, he's the king of the show! Okay, this... This is pretty amazing. I think it may take more effort to make an animation that's this bad than to try and make it good. I am nervous. I have never acted before. Don't worry, you'll be great. Thank you. <laughs> that was the most genuine thank you ever. Oh man, that was adorable. This is kind of cool. It's like they recreate the first episode, but make Kirby the monster instead and DDD the hero. A lot of what they're showing is just the king and Escargoon talking. They really had like no idea. The results of this immediate deadline start to show. The animation just gets worse and worse as it goes on, eventually getting totally destroyed. Not before seeing some of Kirby's own artistic talents. He, he's such a good. So with DDD not being able to show positive results to NME funding their project, instead, the king promises 20 extra cartoons for free. I think that's it for our lovely king here. He may as well retire. Man, what, what an episode that was. It was like pure filler in an anime that already lacks story progression. It was just so mindless, but I'll be damned. It was entertaining. In fact, this is the episode that is getting the reanimated treatment by a bunch of animators coming together to redraw the entire thing. It's looking really cool. Stay tuned for that. So yeah, that is a little look at the anime sensation Kirby right back at you. I know I barely scratched the surface of what the show had to offer, but to be fair, three episodes in, I'm liking it so far. Honestly, one of the best parts about this anime is that it is one of the few examples of a video game adaptation out there that's not bad. It may not be super faithful to the source material, but it also, once again, doesn't insult the fans intelligence, which, yeah. Well, I want to listen to music. This record's hot. We can't say that very often. Kirby creator Masahiro Sakurai had an integral role in the creation of this show. Like for example, you know how there's no humans in this world? You can thank this guy. If there was going to be an anime based on his baby, he wanted one that could be enjoyed by children and parents alike, just like how the games were designed. And I think he got what he wanted. Now, obviously three episodes isn't enough to grade a 100 episode show, but hey, I'll be back to take a look at more of them before you know it. So uh, this is just now me kind of speaking from the heart. Now that I've hit 100 episodes of my show, I really just want to thank all of you for supporting me over the years. Some of you guys have been here since episode one. Some of you have been here since before that. Doesn't matter how long you've been here. I want to thank all of you for sticking around for as long as you have. Uh, it's pretty cool that I get to talk about Kirby for you guys. I hope it's exactly what you wanted. Don't worry. It won't be episode 200. The next time I talk about Kirby, we'll talk about it again really, really soon. So stay tuned. But yeah. We're approaching the new year. This is one final gift to you guys. With that all being said, thank you all for watching and have yourselves a very happy new year. DDD is the one coming at you. Yeah. Is it a good time to quit?